All right, for the second video in 3.4, we're going to look at analyzing piecewise defined functions. Now, these are functions. It's one function, f of x, but it's made up of two or three or four individual functions. Now, what you're going to be asked to do is to evaluate this function. you got to be very careful. All right? If they're asked to find f of negative 1, you cannot put negative 1 in for all three functions and say, I came up with three answers. Piecewise functions come with what we call a domain restriction. That means I can use this function as long as my x's satisfy this compound inequality. I can use the second function as long as my x is equal to negative 1. I can use the third function as long as x is greater than negative 1. So if I'm going to find negative 1, f of negative 1, I don't put it in for x first. I actually take negative 1 and go to the domain restriction and make sure that it's true. So if I plug in negative 1, it doesn't make this inequality true. Yes, negative 3 is less than or equal to negative 1. But negative 1 is not less than negative 1. That's false. When f of negative 1, when x is negative 1, it makes the second domain restriction true. That's the only one. There will only be one restriction that's true. Negative 1 is not greater than negative 1, so I can't put it here. So this is a constant function. 2 is my y coordinate. That's my answer f of 3, well I don't even need to think about the first domain restriction because those are all negative numbers at the front and the back of that inequality. So can't be equal to negative 1, so 3 has to be greater than negative 1. So I'm going to take my 3 and plug it in for x of this function and this function only. So that's going to give me 3 squared, which is 9, minus 1, 8 is my final answer. f of negative 2, it's a negative number for your x, so I'm going to go up to the top and put that in for x up here. Negative 3 is less than or equal to negative 2, that's true. Negative 2 is less than negative 1, that's true. So we're going to put negative 2 into the x of the first function, and that's the only one. So negative 2 times a negative 2, that's a positive 4 plus 1 is 5. That's the answer we're looking for. All right. Next, you'll ask to find the domain of this function. Well, since they gave you domain restrictions, you might as well just use the restrictions here to answer the question. What's really nice about piecewise functions is that these domain restrictions are in numerical order from top to bottom. So the smallest possible x I can have is negative 3. Then I'm going to go to negative 1, but here I'm not equal to negative 1, but I'm equal to negative 1 here. So, so far I'm touching everything from negative 3 to negative 1. And then I'm going everything past negative 1. Whoops. So there's my domain. Bracket negative 3 to infinity. So you will always notice that the numbers negative 3 to the negative 1. Then this inequality should or e e equation starts at negative 1. Then this negative 1 is used again. They will always be there. If they're not, then there's a gap in your domain. All right, next, find all the intercepts. Truly, truly disagree with the author. Don't read his examples. He's going to make you do more work than what is necessary. This is what he tells you to do, and you're going to see, wow, this is way too much work. To find a y-intercept, okay, this part I will slightly agree with because in a y-intercept, your x-coordinate has to be 0. So that's 
finding f of 0. 0 makes this true. 0 is greater than negative 1. We're plugging 0 in for x. So 0 squared is 0 minus 1 is negative 1. There is your y-intercept. But for the x-intercepts, this is where the author really is going to make you do work that is unnecessary at times. He says take each individual function in your piecewise function, set them equal to 0, and solve for x. But then once you find the x, you've got to make sure that that x fits within the domain restriction. And if it doesn't, then that's not an x-intercept. Well, why would I want to do that work if it's not going to be an x-intercept? So again, here's what he's telling you to do. Take negative 2x plus 1, set it equal to 0, solve it for x. Subtract over the 1, divide over the negative 2, 1 half. Well, x is a positive 1 half. But 1 half does not satisfy this domain restriction, so I did this work for nothing. All right, second function. 2 is equal to 0. No, that's false. So there's no x-intercept in the second one. Third one, x squared minus 1 equals 0. Okay, solve for x. Add over the 1. Take the square root of both sides. Don't forget it's going to be x equals a positive or negative 1. Okay, wait a minute. Negative 1 is not greater than negative 1, so I have to throw out the negative 1. But I can keep the positive 1 because positive 1 is greater than negative 1. So 1 comma 0 is my x-intercept. Well, what I'm going to show you in the next example is that I'm going to show you how we can go, how we know exactly which function to go to so we can find our x-intercept without doing wasteful work. All right, next part. Graph the function. Again, kind of disagree with what the author wants you to do because he's trying to get you to do more work than what's necessary. Sometimes it's smart. Sometimes it's not smart. All right, so the first function is linear because it's x to the first. So I know it's going to be a slanted line. How is it slanted? Well, the slope says negative 2. It's got to go downhill. So since this is a linear function, I can test the first and last x's of my domain restriction. And if I have two points, I can connect them with a straight line. So I'm going to take negative 3, plug it in for x, find the y. Negative 1, plug it in for x, find the y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to color code these. So my first function will be graphed in red, the second's in green, the third is in blue. So testing the negative 3 into 1, like I said, negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6. Add the 1 to it is 7. That's your starting point right there. Then we're going to test the negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Negative 1, 3. That's my end point. Now this end point where I'm starting at, because of the equal to line, this will be a closed point when I graph it. But because there's no equal to line on the negative 1, that will stay an open point. So I go to negative 3, 7. 1, 2, 3 to the left, up 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There is that point. Negative 1, 3. Plot that as an open circle. Draw a straight line connecting them. There's that part of the graph. Now you could, if you wanted to make more points, because this is in the form of mx plus b, that's your slope, from this point you can go down 2, right 1, plot a point down to right one plot a point but it's got to be open so there's my first graph again a linear function easy to graph i just need two points so why not test the ones that are given f of x is equal to two only when x equals negative one so that's just the point negative one two so negative one to 
one to the left, up to plot a point. That's all we're going to plot. Now, x squared minus 1 for when x starts at negative 1. So that when I put test negative 1, that's going to be an open circle. So what I need to do is I need to fill in the rest of my graph. So I need to test negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now this is where I think the author again is causing us to do too much work. So I test negative 1. And again, I'll show you what's smarter, but I want you to understand what the author is doing. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1 minus 1 is 0. There's my first point, negative 1, 0. And again, open circle because there's no equal to line. Now we're going to test when x is 0. Okay, 0 squared is 0 minus 1. Okay, that's negative 1. 0, negative 1. That's a closed point because 0 is making this true. Now we're going to test the 1. 1 squared is 1, minus 1 is 0. So 1, 0, plot that point. Then we're going to test the 2. 2 squared is 4, minus 1 is 3. 2, 3. Test 3. 3 squared is 9, minus 1 is 8. So 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's my final point. No reason to test the 4 because I'm going to fall off the graph. So now we connect these and curve them up. And if you notice, because it's an x squared, here's part of that u-shaped graph. And there's my piecewise function all graphed out. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just thought of something. You know, if I had the graph first, I would have clearly seen there's my y-intercept, there's my x-intercept. And I went to had it done any work. Let's keep that in mind for the next example. And for my domain and range, vertical line, touching, 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 still touching, negative 3 to infinity. Oh, remember we earlier we had to find those three values? I have them all here. They're all on my graph plotted. I think maybe in the next example we should graph first. Answer the other questions later because, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words. It's going to give us more information. Okay, oh, now I use the graph to find the range. Okay, now that we have the graph, we can find the range. So again, we'll start at the bottom with a horizontal pencil, touch the lowest point, scroll up, touching, 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 still touching, 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 still touching, 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 touching all the way to that arrow. So we started at negative 1 for the y, and went to the arrow, which means you're going to infinity. So there's my range. They can ask us, is our function f continuous? Well, no, we got all kinds of gaps in here. I can trace it. I got to stop, pick up my pencil, make this point, pick up my pencil, start down here. So no, that's not continuous. All right, next example. Now, Let's use this concept of graphing the function first. But of course, they give us more difficult functions in the homework. Boy, why can't I get a nice easier linear and constant? No, they give us ugly functions. Okay, well, again, I'm going to color code red, blue, green, and I'm going to graph, and I'm going to you know, plot points. So I'm going to test things. So I'm going to start at negative 2, plug it in, and then I'm going to go to the left, and I'm going to go negative 1, 0, or excuse me, negative 2 to the left, I said, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So I make a t-chart. There's the x's I want to test. I'm going to substitute them in, crunch the numbers, and there's all my values. Do you think I did all that work? 
Absolutely not. I'm just making it look good, like I'm smart. No, I'm going to show you how the calculator is going to help us out here. Okay? Then I'm going to do the same thing for the absolute. Oh, let me plot my points here. So negative 2, 1. Negative 3, 4. Negative 3 up to 4. Negative 4 to 5. Negative 5, 4. Negative 6, 1. And it looks like we got another parabola or U-shaped curve, but it's opening down in this case. There it goes. All right, next, in the middle, the absolute value graph. So this has to look like a V-shaped curve. So we're going to test negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. So there's my table. Of course, I plugged these all in, and I did all the math between my ears and came up with these values. No, I didn't. I'll show you how the calculator does this really quick. I'm just making it look really good. So our first point's negative 2, 1. Oh, we already have that point plotted. But remember, in the second function, we can't be equal. So this is an open circle. So I'm going to put a blue circle around my red dot. Then I'm going to plot negative 1, 2. Negative 1, 2. Then I'm going to plot 0, 3. 1, 4. Okay, I thought that's supposed to look like a V-shaped curve. Well, it probably is. We just might be on the right side of the V. We haven't gotten to the left side because we couldn't use those X's. All right. Over here for the square root. Well, square roots gives us decimals, so i got to pick really good numbers. So because I'm so smart, I know that I had to choose X to be 1, 2, and 5 to generate perfect squares so I can take the square root of those numbers. So, for example, when X is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, the square root of 0 is 0. I chose the 2 because 2 minus 1 gives me a 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. And then I chose a 5 because 5 minus 1 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. Now, I'm lying. My calculator did all the work. But let's plot the points. 1, 0. Open circle, because we can't be equal to 1. 2, 1. 5, 2. And there's what looks like to be my half a parabola. Okay, how did the calculator do all those steps for us? All right, well, I put this function into y1 and then I made a table not a graph a table so I'll go through the screenshots I'll bring the calculator on the screen and I'll show you the button pushings we're gonna to go to table setup that's second window I want it to start at negative 2 but I want it to count backwards so this little triangle means change in my table. I want it to count backwards, so I put in a negative 1. Make sure both of these are on auto because that will they automatically build the table for you. So then instead of hitting graph, I hit second graph, and here's my table. That's where I got the negative 2, the 1, negative 3, 4, negative 4, 5, negative 5, 4, negative 6, 1. So I just plotted all the points that fit on my graph. I know, I cheated. But hey, we're going to work smarter, not harder. All right, then we're going to do the same thing for the middle graph or middle function. In the, if you got an old 83 plus, you got to find the absolute value command. And I'll show you where that's at when we get to, when we get to the end. I just want to go through these screenshots to show you how I did this real quick. So the absolute value, that's a function, that gives you the bars. X plus 2 on the inside, the parentheses with the plus 1 on the outside. Go back to my second window for my table setup. Start at negative 2, but now we want to count up to 1. So notice now I changed the table from a negative 1 to a positive 1. Still auto. Second graph negative 2, 1. That's the open circle. Negative 1, 2, 0, 3, 1, 4. It gave me extra points because I didn't tell it where to stop. I just need to know where to stop. 
And the third one, how did I find those wonderful numbers 1, 2, and 5? Well, went back to y1, typed in the square root of x minus 1. With, whoops, come back here, with the old calculator, it gives you the square root symbol with the left parentheses. You type in x minus 1, you close the parentheses, that closes off the square root. Went to my second window, changed my setup to start at 1. So change that to a 1. Didn't change my counting number. I want my table to still count by 1. So I went second graph. And why did I choose 1, 2, and 5? Because I don't want to graph ugly decimals. That's what I put in my table. Make me look smart. There's my 1, 0, my 2, 1, and my 5, 2. All right, so let me go grab my calculator, and we'll crunch through these. Uh-oh, lost my calculator. Do, 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 there you are. Okay. Let me clear out my history, so in case you get lost, you can see my buttons that I'm pushing down here. Y equals, okay, we had that ugly, Clear that all up. Okay, y1, negative left parentheses, x plus 4. Close the parentheses, and I can hit the x squared button to square the binomial. And that way I don't have to worry about coming out of the exponent position, plus 5. Go second, window. That activates the table set. We said start at negative 2. Count backwards, so make that a negative 1. Both are on auto. If it's not on auto, you simply put your cursor on it. I'll change it to ask. Hit enter, and that highlights this one. So to be highlighted, you put your cursor where you want it. Hit enter. Now it's going to automatically find the values. Never want ask. Then you got to type them in. Well, why should you do that when you want the calculator to find the numbers? Again, i got to talk to TI about that one. Okay, second graph, activate the table. And there's your points. Plot the ones you can. Put them in your table. We're good to go. All right, middle, the absolute value. Okay, back to y equals. Now, another little trick I'm going to show you here is I'm going to put this one into y2. I'm going to show you two reasons why you don't want to do this. Okay, absolute value. It's under math. Go to drop-down number. Choice number one, ABS. And oh, by the way, number five, there's the greatest integer command. So ABS is highlighted. Hit enter. In the new calculators, it actually puts the absolute value bars with the text box in there. Kind of like that feature. X plus two. Jump out of the absolute value bars, put in your plus one. All right. What you don't want to do is graph this. Okay, so if I went zoom six just to graph real quick. See this, there's my V shape, but this would be illegal because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Every vertical line is hitting the graph, and therefore I'm touching it in two places. So your calculator, it's really difficult to get it to graph a piecewise function. It's actually easier to graph it by hand using the table feature. So here what I would do is I would turn off the first function. If you put your cursor on the equal sign and hit enter, it turns it off. You won't be able to graph it. And when you ask for the table, Oops, I forgot to change my numbers. Second window, start at negative two, but now we want to count up. So we got to change that back to a one. So delete the negative sign. There's my one, hit enter. Now if I hit second graph for the table, there's my negative two, one, negative one, two, zero, three, and the one, four. 
Again, we just need to know where to stop based on our domain restriction. Plot those points, connect it. Y equals, okay, if I want to go to the third one, turn off the second, and I am going to plot the square root of X minus one. Second, X squared, there's the square root symbol. Whoops, I gotta get off the equal sign there. Second square root, and let's see, that was x minus 1. Second window, we got to change it so it starts at 1. Second window, change the negative 2 to a 1. We're still counting by 1s. Second table, and then there's my values, 1, 0, 2, 1, 5, 2. Plot only the good points you can plot on your graphing or on your graph by hand. All right. Okay. So once the graph is made, all those other questions that we had, one through six, or I should say one through three, and then five and six, I would like to have the graph here because I can find all the values off the graph or I could still do them algebraically. So I'll do both here. We'll talk about it both, but you'll see, you know, once I have the graph, this is so much faster. X is negative two. I go to negative two. I go up and what point solid? Oh, the Y is one. Done. F of five. One, two, three, four, five. Go up to the graph. The Y coordinates two. Done f of negative 1. There's negative 1 for x. I go up my graph. 1, 2. y is 2. Done. Whereas, okay, that seems pretty easy. Or if I do it by hand, negative 2, that makes the first inequality true. So I'm going to plug it in here and go find the value. Do all the math. Yep, there's the 1, just like we said. f of 5. 5 makes this inequality true, so we're going to plug it into the third one. So 5 minus 1, square root of 4 is 2. There, I already did that. And f of negative 1, well, negative 1 somewhere between negative 2 and 1, so we're going to put it in the absolute value. <coughs> negative 1 plus 2 is 1, the absolute value of 1 is 1, plus 1, that's 2. There's our point. We found the y, had it right there. So again, if you had the graph, you really don't have to go through this part. So when you see a piecewise function, the steps and the parts, they'll be A, B, C, D, E, F, will be like one through six that we saw. You'll see in the directions, if they want you to graph it, I would build the graph first and then answer all the other questions much more efficiently. And again, use your calculator and that second window for your table set and your second graph to find your table to find the points really fast and graph them. What is the domain of the function? Again, you can follow the x's. Here's an arrow. That's going out to negative infinity. I'm touching, 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 still touching, touching, touching. My x's don't have a break. So I'm going from negative infinity to negative 2 then negative 2 to 1, then 1 out to infinity. All real numbers is my domain. Number 3, find, my, find all the intercepts. Okay, well, let's see. Crosses the x-axis there. So I only have to set this equation equal to 0 to solve for the x-intercept. And there's no other, so I don't have to solve either of these two. And then my y-intercept, uh, 1, 2, 3, 0, 3. So saves me on work. I know I only have to find that one x-intercept right there. So negative, the binomial x plus 4 squared plus 5, set it equal to 0. Solve for x, undo everything you see on the left side from the outside to the inside. It's like doing your Orders of operation, PEMDAS backwards. Is there any adding and subtracting to undo? Yes, there's a plus 5. Okay, subtract it over. 
Is there any multiplying on the outside? Yes, there's a negative 1 being multiplied. Okay, divide negative 1 over to the right. Negative 5 divided by negative 1, 5. How do you get rid of the power of 2? You take the square root of both sides. x plus 4 equals positive or negative the square root of 5. I'm inside the parentheses. I start over. Adding and subtracting, yep, there's a plus 4, subtract it over, and I just like to sneak in front of the plus or minus. Now, this is telling me there's two x-intercepts with the plus or minus, but we can see in the graph there's only one. So here's negative 4. I don't want to add anything and go to the right, which would be this x-intercept right here if the red graph continued. So I'm going to get rid of the plus sign and go with the minus sign. So negative 4 minus the square root of 5 puts me right there. Okay, so there's my x-intercept. And when they ask you to type it in, they may ask you for an exact value, which means no decimals allowed. So just type in negative 4 minus the square root of 5 comma 0 in an ordered pair. And there's an ordered pair icon there. Just click on that, plug in the x, plug in the y. The y-intercept, like I said earlier, we already see from the graph at 0, 3, we're done. Off to the next one. 5, find the range. Lowest possible y, arrow right here. That means negative infinity going down. Then we're going up. Touch, 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 touch. Now it's a trick question. A lot of people say, oh, I'm at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the highest point. No, it's not. There's an arrow over here. It continues and keeps going up and up and it will go past that 5. So with an arrow here we're going down to negative infinity and this arrow here we're going up to positive infinity. So all real numbers is my range. Is my function continuous? Everything was going okay until I got to x equals 1. Nope, we're not continuous. So again by having the graph first can really answer those other five questions really fast.